Hey y'all, I'm Damon Oates, founder of Deco Exchange. Who else has heard that crafting is just a hobby? I turned my love of crafting into a thriving multi seven figure company, surrounded myself in an amazing community, and met some amazing business owners along the way. I'm here to show everyone that makers mean business. What is up, you guys? It is Parker here again. Y'all, I got to hear the, the finished episode. Uh, episode six with Gretchen. I absolutely loved what she had to say. And I real, real honestly, Tom, okay. We were trying to keep episodes short. Uh, it seems like most people enjoyed the shorter episodes. So I didn't want to try to overload anything. I didn't want to try to cram anything. So what I decided to do was to sit down again. Funny story. I couldn't sleep you guys. Cause I had so much on my mind about Facebook ads and I, I knew there was so much more that could be added to the discussion. Uh, I didn't want to put it all into one episode. So I figured I would just record an additional episode, you know, why not? I just want to talk a little bit more about Facebook ads. And uh, I thought a good, a good talking point uh, for this episode would be, you know, what are we doing for Facebook ads? Like what kind of ads are we running? In addition to that, what, what are the options out there for Facebook ads? Like what can you even do? I'm just going to talk about what I would do if I was just starting out. So we we touched on it a little bit when I spoke with Gretchen and, you know, free, free is good. You guys, Facebook lives are great. Live video in general is great. Video is great. Pictures are great. You, you want to definitely have a good, solid, engaged community base, no matter what you're doing. And that's always going to be the cheapest thing. But when it comes to ads, uh, Facebook lives are a really great option. And I'm going to start with the simplest option, and that's going to be boosting. So I, uh, again, I did mention it last episode. If you guys are going to boost something, boosts are like the the training wheels of Facebook ads, right? So you don't have you don't have all of the options, you don't have all of the controls, but you can kind of get the job done. When you boost a post, you basically just tell Facebook how much money you want to spend and what kind of people you want to target, and in return, Facebook will tell you, okay, I'll show it to this many people over this time period and we're good to go. So that's really the easiest way to get into it, you guys. My biggest recommendation for when you're boosting a post is just make sure you have a very clear definition of what a success is when you are trying to get results out of that boosted post. So I say that meaning, uh, are you trying to make a sale? Is Are you listing something uh, that's on your, on your Etsy shop? Are you trying to get, uh, we talked a bit in the interview about lead magnets, y'all emails are, really, really powerful when it comes to Facebook ads and marketing in general. So don't sleep on email addresses. That's what I mean when I say, do you have a a goal in mind? What are you trying to do? Don't just boost one of those stupid memes because you think it's going to go viral or, you know, try to get something out of whatever you're boosting because otherwise you're just throwing money away. One thing we like to do in terms of boost, uh, I don't go into ads manager to do everything. Y'all don't tell Gretchen, she'll probably be upset with me. Uh, But, you know, when Damon or I do a video, And for those of you guys who have watched our Facebook lives or anything like that, if I'm doing a Facebook live, I'm hard selling. I am telling you guys, look at this awesome ribbon, check out what we have over on decoexchange.com and go buy it. Damon is more of a soft seller. So he will be doing demos with some of the product and he'll be talking about his coaching group and he'll, he'll drop some nuggets every once in a while, you know, trying to make a sale one way or another. You guys already know this, but so what we will do is we'll just hop in and boost some of those videos, uh, whether it be me in the warehouse or Damon doing a, a wreath live or, or whatever he may be doing. And we have different audiences set up for, for each of us, different audiences segmented out in ads manager. So I know if I'm selling ribbon, I can target those people. I can make a lookalike audience and I can target similar people, people who visited our Shopify store, people who have interacted on our previous lives for selling supplies. So there's a whole gambit of different audiences that we have. And that is the quick and easy way to get some paid contents, paid sponsored content out on Facebook. It's just doing a boost. So when I'm saying boost, that's that's the easy way, you guys. For those of you guys just starting out, that is my recommendation for you is maybe just try boosting a few posts, but don't do it. Like I said, don't do it willy nilly. Make sure that you have some sort of clear goal in mind. So an example of a great post to boost would be one of your Etsy listings, you know, post about this great wreath that you made and how lovely it is and how you need something on your door for fall or, or whatever it may be. And then you can boost that. And then if you make a sale, you'll know because Facebook will be able to tell you that information and all the insights of the post. And then 
the next thing I want to talk about you guys is I want to talk about the different ads that we actually run. And I'm not going to go into all the details of every single one, but just to give you guys an idea of, of the kind of stuff that we're doing. So whenever I was interviewing Gretchen, I mentioned that we have a, a free tutorial. Uh, it's a Valentine's Day wreath. And the only thing that we want from that post is we want people to click on it and we want people to give us their email address to get the free tutorial. That's the only thing that we're doing. And y'all, we've had thousands and thousands of people click on that video and give us their email address. So there's a whole slew of things that we could do with their email addresses, right? Not only can we retarget them because our Facebook pixel is on that page that they visited, but we can also use their email addresses for Facebook ads. So you can actually send those emails into Facebook upload them into Facebook and Facebook will find those people on Facebook and show whatever content you want to show them. You can actually get down into that level of detail. Another thing we can do with those email addresses is create what's called a lookalike audience. So it's going to basically find similar people who have similar interests, who do similar things as the people who have those email addresses. So it's a really nice way to find even more people without having to spend more money and find more leads, you can just tell Facebook to go do it for you and they'll take care of it. So that's one of the, the biggest obvious things that we do for Facebook ads is we promote that free tutorial and we use it as a, a lead magnet to grow our email list and to get more people engaged on our page. Another thing that we do, and I'm sure you guys have seen this before, is we run ads for our supplies. So for those of you guys that don't know, we, we sell supplies uh, listed on decoexchange.com. We sell you know, wreath, wreath making supplies, ribbon, mesh, all that stuff. But that's not an ad for, for selling supplies, you guys. Uh, we just use Facebook ads as a way to get our products in front of more people. So maybe it's people in our existing community. Uh, because as you guys know, the way the, the Facebook algorithm works is not every single person that's on your page is going to see your content every single time. So what we usually do is I'll do a video... Uh, showing off new supplies and then we'll put some ad spend behind it and we'll just target people that are already on our page or I'll target people that have already shopped with us before or I'll target people who have visited our website before so those are those people are warm those people know us they've probably shopped with us before so it's a really easy sell and the nice thing about that is they're cheap it's cheap to show your stuff to people who already know you and it's cheap to sell to people who already have bought from you it's basically a numbers game, right? So that you don't have to show them the same thing over and over. You don't have to pitch to them five different ways. They already know that you have good stuff and they want it. So the only thing we spend ad money on for that is just getting it in front of people uh, who already have been with us or have already shopped with us before. One of the last ideas that we have in terms of Facebook ads is we target new people. The lead magnet brings in new people. The retargeting brings in old people who have already bought with us before. And then we have just some general like brand awareness. So that's probably the best way to describe it is just so people start to see our face. People start to know who we are. So the first one just gives people a freebie. The second one targets our people who already know, like, and trust us. And then the last one is just brand new people all together just so they know who we are. Damon's like pointing thing is iconic. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you've ever seen, he's like always pointing at it and making his funny face. Uh, I'm always showing off supplies. So we use some of those, um, like those staple personalities in our business to get our faces and our brand in front of people who don't know us. So that's kind of the third way I would say that we use Facebook ads. So I hope that kind of give you guys an idea of what we're doing with Facebook ads. Obviously, there's a, a whole range of different options you can kind of go with. Like I was saying earlier, I felt like the, the whole episode was great. I just thought there was a whole lot more content. Gretchen and I talked a little bit about, um, you know, budget and how to get started and all of that. So I would honestly, you guys, the biggest thing is I would just say start with a, an amount you're comfortable with, just like what Gretchen was saying, and uh, just have a very clear goal and have a very clear idea of what what you're trying to get out of something. I challenge you guys to give it a shot. Um, I know ads can be scary. Spending money can be very scary. I'm not saying go out and spend you know thousands and thousands of dollars, but if you're if you're selling a physical product, if you're selling a digital product, y'all, if you're if you're selling anything, uh, just try boosting it. Try targeting your ideal customer 
and just, you know, maybe spend a dollar a day for five days or something like that, just to see how it works. Um, I could sit here all day and explain how ads works and you have to click here and click there. But until you actually start getting into it and trying it out, it's not going to be the same. You'll learn a whole lot more. Uh, I don't want to say it's trial by fire, but you know, once you're into it and looking back in the back end of everything, it starts all to make sense. As I'm kind of closing out here, you guys, I just want to bring up three maybe quick wins or maybe quick action items that you guys can do. Uh, and they're not directly Facebook ad related, but they all are in that same kind of ecosystem. So the, the three things I can say is make sure that you have a way to collect an email address. So whether that be a follow-up on Etsy or I think Damon covers it. I don't want to say uh, the wrong way to do it, you guys, because I'm not the, the expert when it comes to this. But however you're collecting your customers, just make sure that you can get their email address. Make sure you have the Facebook pixel installed on whatever website you're using. Y'all, if you use a third-party website uh, like Etsy, um, Amazon, whatever, you can't have your own pixel installed on that. But if you have your own website, your own Wix website, your own blog, whatever it is, you can absolutely um, have your pixel installed. And I highly, highly recommend that you do that. And then the last thing is start looking at the data, you guys. You can... Between the email addresses and the pixel data, you can combine that all into the back end of Facebook and you can start looking at your customer information and you can start getting some real deep insights on how old they are, what time they visit your site, what kind of interests they have. And you might be surprised when you start looking at this information. I can't tell you how important it is in the long game to have all of this information. It takes some time, it takes some practice, and it takes a whole lot of uh, patience to go through all of that and try to understand what's going on. But the good thing is you can't do that wrong, right? As long as you're collecting the data, you can, you can figure it out eventually. But the other two things, getting a way to get customer emails and putting your pixel on the website are two things that you can do very, very easily. And it's some quick wins to make sure that you're set up in the future for whenever you're ready to start doing ads. Maybe it's not now that you have um, you have some firing power. You know, if you can upload a few hundred emails into Facebook, you're off to a great start when it comes to making audiences in Facebook ads look alike audiences. That is you can do custom audiences without email addresses. Uh, but the more information that you provide to Facebook, the better that it can serve you. And then as far as the pixel goes, you guys, I can I could talk for days and days about how important a pixel is. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, the pixel lets Facebook know when someone is on your website or clicking add to cart or viewing a product or taking any kind of action on your website. And it makes it super duper easy uh, to run ads back to those people to retarget those people who maybe they added something to cart and they didn't check out. Or even if you're, if you're just a blogger and you're trying to get more traffic to your website, you can retarget those people who visited last month, but haven't been back. I know those two things that I mentioned aren't directly related to Facebook ads uh, when you look at them at face value. But once you start putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, having a good email list and putting your pixel on your website is a great place to start. Uh, even before you're running ads, even if you don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Hopefully that that added some sort of uh, actionable items for you guys. Maybe make a light bulb go off, hopefully. That's like my biggest my biggest dream, my biggest goal, you're right? I was talking about how you should always have a goal when you're running Facebook ads. And my goal for this podcast episode was to make someone's light bulb go off, right? So I'm, I'm hoping that that did that for someone, you guys. Uh, if you guys enjoy this episode, make sure to head over to makersmeanbusiness.com. Uh, make sure and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. You guys, you can check us out on Facebook at Deco Exchange, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, we also have our blog, howtomakewreaths.com. We are all over the place. Just search for Deco Exchange and you can find us. Y'all have a good one.